Every mythology has stories of terrifying monsters. Enormous dragons and multiple-headed serpents are not too uncommon in ancient civilization. It's these types of monsters that are normally considered the apex or the origin of all other monsters. In Mesopotamia, this title fell to the primordial deity Tiamat. However, there are also stories that would suggest she was much more than just a monster. She may have been the creator of monsters, but she was also the creator of all life. Mesopotamian mythology has various different stories of creation, and most of this we can attribute to rivalries and discrepancies between the Sumerian cities. As today's topic is Tiamat, we can examine the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian creation myth which was recovered in 1849, written on seven clay tablets in Akkadian. Before we delve any deeper, a quick word from today's sponsor Babel, a fantastic resource for learning new languages. One of the goals I set myself this year was to continue learning various different languages, because when travelling, you never know which one might come in handy. It's also quite useful for me when researching video topics from all around the world to have a basic understanding of that given language. I began using Babbel on my desktop, but switched over to the app on my phone when I realised how easy it was to use on the go. There are numerous ways you can learn, ranging from beginner to expert, and Babbel doesn't just teach you vocabulary, you learn about different regional dialects, history, and culture. I tend to stick to the 10 minute lessons as you can fit them in whenever you have small amounts of free time throughout the day. As you're about to see, the language I chose was Spanish. La llama. La llama. Ellos. Ellos. Mallorca. Mallorca. La paella. La paella. If you'd like to start learning a new language, you can use my link in the description to get 60% off your subscription. If you do choose to do so, feel free to share what language you'd be interested in learning in the comments section, or perhaps even suggest one that you think I should consider learning next. This creation myth begins, as most do, before the creation of the world, where there only existed a singular body of water swirling in the chaos. This body of water was divided into two, and thus the first two primordial beings were created. From the sweet, fresh water emerged the god Absu, and from the bitter, salt water the goddess Tiamat. From their union, other deities were born, Lamu and Lahamu, followed by Anshar and Kishar. From Anshar came Anu, the primordial deity of the sky, and from Anu came Enki, the god of water and knowledge. All of this new creation would change the dynamic of the world forever. The chaos caused by these children disturbed Tiamat, and over time her disapproval and contempt for her children grew and grew. Absu tried to rein his children in, but the calm that Tiamat yearned for was no longer achievable. He took his concerns to the deity Mamu, hoping that he would be able to help Tiamat come to a solution. Mamu's solution, however, was not the answer Absu was looking for. He proposed the only way to end the chaos would be to destroy all of the new gods. Absu, without an alternative course of action, agreed. His children, however, were not so oblivious and had heard of his extermination plan. Enki had prepared a spell that would place Absu into an internal slumber. When Mamu had heard of what had happened, he tried to wake Absu. When Enki and the other gods found him, they chained and locked him away with Absu. Wearing Absu's crown or halo, Enki enjoyed this newfound power, and so to make this permanent, he killed Absu. With Absu's remains, Enki created his home. Inside of Absu's heart, Enki and his wife Damkina created their son, Marduk. Of all the gods, Marduk is described as the most spectacular.
Tiamat hearing the news of her husband's death was full of rage. If she disliked her children before, there's no doubt it was now full on hatred. She turned to the god Kingu for counsel. He advised his mother that the only way to avenge the death of Absu and stop her children would be to go to war. Tiamat presented Kingu with the Tablet of Destinies, which made him the new king. It also meant his leadership could not be challenged, making him the perfect general to lead her army. This is where we get the concept of Tiamat as the mother of monsters. In order to challenge her children, she created eleven hybrid creatures. The Venomous Snake, the Great Dragon, the Exalted Serpent, the Furious Snake, the Hairy One, the Big Weather Beast, the Mad Lion, the Scorpion Man, the Violent Storms, the Fish Man, and the Bull Man. Enki, hearing of this new army, sought out the counsel of his grandfather Anshar, who insisted that Enki would have to find a way to appease Tiamat, but also feared that he was not strong enough to face Tiamat and survive. He proposed that they elected a new champion. Enki's son Marduk was young, but he was the strongest champion they had. Marduk came before Anshar with only one question. Which god would he have to slay? To which Anshar replied his opponent was no god, but the goddess Tiamat. Marduk, confident of his victory, accepted, but only if he was to be proclaimed the supreme god with authority over all others. After some deliberation, the gods accepted his terms and gave Marduk the throne. Before he set out for battle, he was visited by the gods who prepared him. He was given a mighty scepter and armour to protect him. He also received a bow, a quiver, a mace, control over the four winds, and bolts of lightning. Marduk also had Imhulu, his own weapon known as the evil wind. Anu presented him with a net, and his body was set ablaze. Marduk rode into battle on his chariot, and when he appeared before Tiamat he trapped her using the four winds given to him. He then accused her of making Kingu an undeserving and unrightful leader. All of the trouble and chaos in the universe was caused by her. This was enough to goad her into engaging him by herself. Tiamat tried to swallow Marduk, but with the net he was given he was able to maintain distance. Using the evil wind he was able to fill her mouth until she became so bloated from the pressure that she was unable to move. Marduk took his bow and fired an arrow at the helpless Tiamat, piercing her heart and killing the goddess. The other gods attempted to flee, but Marduk captured them. Tiamat's monstrous children were also captured using Anu's net, and they were chained away. Some accounts believe Marduk chained these creatures to his own feet as an ever-present reminder of his victory. Other accounts state that these creatures were chained at the foot of the Gate of Abzu. The Tablet of Destinies was taken away from Kingu, and Marduk took him to the Angel of Death. He took the mace he was given and smashed Tiamat's head, the blood being carried away by the north wind. The rivers Tigris and Euphrates were formed from her weeping eyes, and the Milky Way was made from her tail. Marduk then split Tiamat's body into two. Using one half he created the heavens or the sky. Anu, Enlil, and Enki were appointed duties in this particular domain. The other half was then used to create the Earth. Marduk then separated the gods to serve above and below, 300 in the heavens and 600 on Earth. He created the constellations in the image of the gods, as well as the sun and the moon, which then created a way to define the days of the year, as there was now a night and day cycle. It was then decided that Marduk would create mankind using his own blood, and they would serve the gods. Enki and the other gods thought it would be best if a god was sacrificed instead, and so Kingu was chosen. From his blood, mankind would be created.
From this creation story, you could paint Tiamat as this big, bad, evil entity, but there really isn't a good or bad side in this story, it's mostly just chaos. The term used for the events in Tiamat's story and many others across the world is Chaos Camp. This refers to the Void State, or a state of emptiness which comes before the creation of the universe. You can look at Tiamat as a physical monster, or as the personification of primordial chaos. In Mesopotamia, her image gradually began to swing more to the evil monstrous side. The brave hero who slays the monstrous dragon or serpent is a story as old as time itself. Marduk's defeat of Tiamat would eventually come to symbolise the triumph of good over evil. Babylonian kingdoms celebrated this story as yearly tradition, the representation that law will always overcome lawlessness. Unlike the Enuma Elish, the other creation story involving Tiamat portrays her as a beautiful woman known as the Glistening One. Just as water brings life to so many, here she is a peaceful creator goddess. There are no issues between Tiamat and her children, and through many generations the cosmos is slowly formed. Modern depictions and inspirations of Tiamat generally play on the more monstrous side, and often relate to creatures such as dragons. Whenever we see Tiamat in any kind of modern fantasy, more often than not she is an evil chaotic monster, which may not be entirely true, but it does make sense for numerous reasons. The creation story of Enuma Elish is a much more developed story than the alternative. It's also in line with the change in attitude towards Tiamat from the Mesopotamian people themselves. If you've enjoyed this look into some Mesopotamian mythology, then let me know which figures and deities you'd like to see covered in the future. 